Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. Today I'm doing a special video about how to do fan art and I am going to really be devoting a lot of it to someone that I'm a big fan of and that is the singer-songwriter Miko. Now some of you uh, who know my books you may have recalled that I was uh, given the chance to create this poster uh, for Miko and for the uh, singer Marie Digby. They went on tour together. They called it the Hapa Tour. Uh, a few years back, and so this was my sort of uh, anime-style version of Miko that I did uh, at that time, which was a lot of fun. But today what I'm going to do is a more, um, you know, traditionally realistic-looking uh, illustration of Miko as a piece of fan art, and as I work on it, um, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, creating fan art, but also about Miko herself because I got the chance to have a uh, phone chat with her and ask her a few questions so that I could uh, relate her answers uh, to you uh, over the course of this video. So hang on a second, I'm going to get my drawing materials and we will get into it. Alright, so uh, as I talk to you I'm going to be working on the shading uh, of her face and I should say that this is based on the uh, photo from her uh, debut album as I understand it, hope I've got that right. Uh, and that was when I first discovered her music. Uh, and the thing you need to know about Miko is that uh, her grandmother was Japanese, and so she's one quarter Japanese, which is sort of an uh, interesting aspect and, uh, of, of her life. And she, um, you know, emphasizes that I think in a lot of uh, her uh, music and the and the way she puts her albums out like this. Um, origami uh, folded unicorn was on the front cover of one of her uh, latest albums called In Your Dreams, I believe. Uh, and um, her name, of course, looks like a, a Japanese name. It is a Japanese name, but the funny thing about it is that when she was a child, they didn't know how to pronounce this in the Japanese fashion, which would be Meiko. And that's what I've written over here in Hiragana, Meiko. Uh, but they didn't know that as kids, and so she started saying Miko. And her sister, uh, I hope I've got this right, was uh, calling herself Kiko, which, uh, again, would have been pronounced Keiko in Japan. Uh, and by the time she learned that the pronunciation was not accurate, uh, it, had, it had, had already stuck in a way, you know, it was, it was too late, we can't change, we can't start pronouncing it differently now. Uh, so uh, she remains, to this day, Miko, rather than Mako, but I think that sort of makes it, it interesting, don't you think? Rather than just pronouncing it the same way millions of people do in Japan. Uh, in any case, I got the chance to talk to her a little bit about her connection to Japan. You know, she, uh, she said that her grandmother um, had come over uh, just after the war, and she was in this generation where they didn't really emphasize the uh, culture so much in the, or the language, so that her daughter. Uh, grew up, uh, you know, Miko's mother, grew up just speaking English and not speaking any Japanese. And so it, was, it wasn't until years later that Miko had the chance to uh, reconnect and uh, with her uh, Japanese family in Japan. Uh, and this is a very cool thing that happened for her. Uh, she had this song called Stuck on You, and I don't know the particulars, but it became quite a successful song in Japan. It was number one. Uh, on the foreign language uh, record chart for like, I think she said 12 weeks or something like that. And you know, uh, I lived in Japan for a couple of years. I can tell you that uh, the the big, um, you know, Western st uh, style music or English language music that makes it over to Japan is normally by really big name artists like Michael Jackson and so forth. Um, so for Miko as a singer songwriter, who didn't have that um, amount of, you know, fame and, and sort of promotional money behind her uh, to have so much success with that song is really, I think, pretty remarkable. Uh, and it just, uh, she, what she said, what Miko said to me over the phone was that uh, she thought her grandmother, the spirit of her grandmother, uh, her grandmother was pulling some strings for her uh, to make that song. Uh, the success that it was. It's really interesting. But she, she said the primary great thing about that experience was, was that she got to go to Japan and reconnect with her family. Now I guess I should talk a little bit about the idea of doing um, 
fan art. My theory about fan art is that if you are simply doing an, an exact uh, replica of a photo, um, you're maybe not being as creative as you could be. Uh, this is based on a photo, but I, I, I've zoomed in on the face and I have uh, added my own sort of graphic uh, elements to it and created uh, an artwork that is not going to be identical to any photo that you see out there uh, on the internet or in the real world. Uh, and so that would, that would be my advice to you, that if you want to do a piece of fan art, relating to a singer or an actor uh, or actress or anybody that you are a fan of. See if you can, you know, there's no nothing wrong with copying a photo, um, but see if you can take it to another level, add something a little more unique to it, make it your own. Um, I definitely focused on the sort of Japan aspect, and I thought it was sort of interesting to those of you who can uh, read the hiragana, that we've got both the meiko here and the miko, the way she pronounces it, uh, in the same illustration, and so that was sort of my little um, fun concept for this piece. Uh, so, but let's go on to what I talked to Miko about on the phone, and this was just yesterday, I gotta say. <laughs> this is fresh off <laughs> the press. She lives in Germany now, which was also kind of interesting to think that, um, you know, uh, I was calling, you know, it was like 2.30 in the afternoon for me, who knows what time it was for her in the evening. Um, but the next question that I asked her about was if she had any advice for people that wanted to pursue a um, creative career. You know, maybe there are uh, people watching this video, the, you have a 9-to-5 job or uh, doing something that doesn't involve maybe uh, your talents uh, as you see them, and you sort of dream of going out there and, and making a career out of something that you love, whether it be uh, drawing, uh, music, acting, and I thought Miko might have some advice because she, like I, we both sort of chose this, you know, freelance life of, of um, rolling the dice and trying to make a living based solely on uh, doing what you love. And uh, it, happily it's worked out for both of us. Um, but she said, uh, and, and specifically relating to music, that she um, um, she shared and this surprised me, she confided that she uh, has suffered from stage fright, uh, and that that was something she had to overcome, and I thought that that was uh, very interesting for people who feel um, that, you know, everyone who goes into music is supremely self-confident and so forth. I thought it's good for you to know, no, that is not the case. She had to overcome, and she said even now, she sometimes has bouts of stage fright. Uh, that she has to sort of fight against in order to uh, play live. So I thought that was an interesting thing. And another thing she said, and this is something that I've said in the past, is that uh, you shouldn't be comparing yourself too much to other people. Don't view uh, other artists or other musicians as uh, competitors. I've always said this, that you know I don't view uh, creative pursuits as a competition. Um, you don't need to be trying to beat somebody out. And if they have success, that's not taking something away from you, you know. And I, and I thought it was interesting that she also had found that that was an important thing, a uh, lesson she'd learned uh, doing this as a job. Um, she quoted the famous line um, that comparison is the thief of joy, that uh, if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you will... You know, it, it will bum you out, basically, you know. <laughs> Better not to compare your success or your talents or your looks or whatever it is to other people. Um, just uh, do your best with what you have, you know. Um, and then the last thing that I uh, asked Miko about was um, the writing of one of these songs, one of these three new songs that she's just released within the last couple of uh, weeks. And... and um, I love all three of them, but the one that really, really grabbed me is this song called Roll Out. And I'm going to play it for you. Well, why don't I just play it for you right now so you can hear. I'm going to play a part of it. Hopefully YouTube doesn't get me in trouble for this because she has given her permission for me to play an excerpt, a, a portion of this song. Uh, she's the copyright holder. And uh, 
as I continue working on this illustration of Miko, I am going to play, oh, I guess, like approximately half of this new song by Miko called Roll Out. So let's go ahead and have a listen. <laughs> first half or so of a brand new song by Miko called Roll Out. And boy, um, don't blame me if that melody gets <laughs> stuck in your head, because I have had it stuck in my head for like days. It's such a great uh, melody, or several great melodies inside that song. I'm adding a little bit of white gouache here as a finishing touch uh, nearing the end of this uh, illustration. And um, let me just say a little bit about what Miko told me about the writing of that song. She said that she wrote that song in Spain uh, by the seaside, I believe she told me. Which, oh boy, can you imagine any better place to write a song? It must have been amazing. Um, and uh, that that is not a sort of a first-person song in the traditional sense. She is sort of imagining, um, you know, she's singing from the point of view of someone else, someone that she knows, who's uh, gone through uh, some of the experiences described in that song. And, uh, yeah, just going to use the white gouache here to do these uh, final little touches. I may need to just speed things up, but I do want to make sure that you know that there is a link to Miko's uh, Spotify and, uh, I guess, uh, Bandcamp and all of her social media uh, in the description of this video. By all means, check out her work. If you liked that song at all, you're in for a treat because she has so many great songs and there's a whole, you know, back catalog of uh, terrific material waiting for you. I envy you. I wish I could go back and discover Miko for the first time all over again. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead. I'll uh, time lapse to just add these last little touches of white gouache and then we'll be, we'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, there's my video, my fan art video for Miko. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And um, do check out Miko's music. I think you're really going to love it. I'm not going to bring out my books like I normally do. This video is all about Miko. It's not about my books. But if you do buy my books, uh, rest assured, I am very grateful to you for having done that. But I think it's time for me to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.